Hi guys, today we're talking about Arc Fault Detection Devices, AFDDs. Um, we've had some really good uh, customer feedback about our AFDD with Pro Tools, but we've also had some comments and confusion regarding is there a need to update these devices constantly and how they work compared to other devices in the marketplace. So, Paul, we spoke to our experts, right? We did. So, of course, our AFDD does comply with this British standard, BSEN 62606, but you know, a company like ours are fortunate, we manufacture and we actually design our own products. So we can actually have a chat with the designer of this product himself. So we caught up with Nicholas earlier on, and this is what he had to say. So, Nicholas, are there any mandatory tests that all manufacturers have to uh, complete? Yes, of course. Uh, in the product standard, the 62606, uh, there are two kinds of tests. Uh, the first uh, one is series arc fault tests um, and for these tests we use a, a specific um, a cable specimen which is also called the carbonized cable uh, and it is described in the standard how to prepare it uh, in order to be sure to get real arc faults in order to, to get uh, dangerous arc faults uh, with the uh, flames and it, it works good huh, because uh, we can get uh, flames uh, even with a low value of current uh, so like uh, 3 or 4 amps huh? and there is a second uh, kind of um, test which are the parallel arc full tests and for this uh, test we use a blade uh, to cut the insulation of a phase and neutral uh, cable and, and it uh, it works also uh, pretty well because we can uh, uh, have a real parallel arc faults huh, with uh, strikes uh, which is uh, different from a short circuit. It's not the same phenomenon. Okay, interesting, uh, Nicholas. Thanks for that. So, um, studying the stand a little bit, we've also seen these, these product tests called masking tests. So, could you explain a little bit about what these are, please? Yes, the, this is related also to series arc full tests, and we in the pro, in the product standard, uh, it is required to use a, a specified uh, list of loads of appliances, uh, for example, a vacuum cleaner, uh, um, lights, compressors, or uh, um, switched mode power supplies. Uh, to be sure that uh, even if we have a, a complex load. Uh, the product is still able to detect the, the dangerous arc faults. Uh, and for this uh, second kind of, uh, and for this uh, test with uh, masking loads, uh, there is a choice which is given to the manufacturer to use either the carbonized pass cable or the uh, another uh, tester which is called the arc generator, uh, which is uh, uh, different uh, from the um, cable specimen because it's electrodes, uh, but it's, uh, we at Trager, we, we choose to use the carbonized uh, cable because uh, it is uh, thought to be the most dangerous uh, situation. That's very interesting, Nicholas. So the manufacturer has a choice between the arc generator or the, the cable specimen. And what from what you're saying is, uh, you know, research has shown that the cable specimen is, is more, more of a threat is, is, is that what I'm understanding? That's what we believe, huh? because um, if we uh, perform the test with the carbonized uh, cable specimen, we can see that we get real flames. Huh? So uh, it's, it's really, we, we can here understand that we can get electrical fire. Huh? It's a real fire risk. Uh, but with, with the electrodes, it's different. We, we, there is no, no such uh, flame. Huh? Uh, it's only uh, sparks, uh, and also um, it is much more difficult to, to maintain an arc uh, by using the electrodes huh, uh, when performing the tests. So the, the carbonized cable is a much more reliable way of performing the tests, and also we believe that it, it is more um, uh, representative of the real-life uh, dangerous situation. And this is That's also perfect. an explanation. This is also an explanation uh, why it's difficult to force the, the operation of our agar AFDD uh, by using uh, electrodes uh, arcs. Yeah, that's, um, that's 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 helped a lot with my understanding, I'm sure. Yeah, thank you very much for your time, Nicholas. Thank you, Excellent. Thanks, Nicholas. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Here we have a tester on which we are able to generate series arc fault. 
from left to right, first we have an RCBO in two modules and then an AFDD in one module. The last product on the right is a switch to generate the series arc fault. Okay, so let's start first by closing the AFDD and now I insert the series arc fault in the circuit. Okay, so the AFDD has stripped very quickly. So let's do it again. Let's do the same test, but we will zoom on the series arc fault to see it better. So as you can see, the AFDD trips very quickly, which prevents the fire from occurring. What you can also try now is to reclose the AFDD on the existing fault. And finally, let's see what happens with an RCBO. I have to open it manually as it didn't detect the series arc fault. Of course, it hasn't been designed to detect such kind of fault. The testing you can see on the screen is using a cable specimen test. Now we use this test for the new single modular AFDD, so the algorithms are built around this kind of testing. Whereas the double modular sized AFDD, which was our first AFDD, was built using an arc generator algorithm. Both fully compliant to the standard, as Nicholas explained earlier, but there will be some differences how they react. That was a really good insight into the world of AFDDs with Nicholas. What an expert. Yeah, yeah, what an expert. Yeah, and it's interesting to see, you know, how he, um, how he showed us with the rig, how it working. You know, you could actually see what happens when you've got this cable that's got an arc inside it, which is represented of real world scenarios. What happens with the AFDD being in the circuit and what happened to it when the RCBO only was on the circuit? Yeah, it got well on fire. When it, when it was powered up by the RCBO, it, it carried on and, it, and, and we saw cable flame. Um, when it was with the AFDD, it operated and it done its job. So I kind of understand as well why the cable specimen is much more of a reliable test than a, and a real world test than, than an arc generator. Because cause when Nicholas was explaining the difficulty in sustaining the arc for the lab condition. So um, yeah, very intense, very, very knowledgeable and very reassuring to, yeah. see, to see that expertise. Yeah, definitely. So we're now going to talk about the need to update these devices. It's great that ours are updatable, but there's contractors out there thinking they're going to be responsible for constant updates. It's not the case, Paul, is it's it? Absolutely not the case. You know, the reason we decided to have this update facility, and we're the only ones that have this update facility at the moment, is because we expect this device to sit in someone's installation for, what, 20, 25 years? Okay, what's the chances of in 20, 25 years, some manufacturer of a, a specific machine come, that has a particular signature that the AFDDs don't recognize and it's, they're all gonna trip? Okay, we know that's gonna happen some in 25 years. You can update ours. You won't need to change ours like you will other people. Perfect, so with this in mind, we've caught up with one of our customers to see how they're getting on. And you know, you guys mm. have been really helpful in sort of helping get to this point. Um, you know, the updates on the Pro Tools. I mean, we did the video last week showing like a real live situation. Like it was a, a minute and a half long of, mm. you know, connecting, checking for the update and doing the update to then, you know, testing and putting the circuit back into service. Mm. I mean, admittedly, I didn't take the loads out, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> real world marking and all that. <laughs> but, but yeah and, and, and that's just true and so you've had an update but obviously when I look at mine I haven't had an update I've got four in my house I haven't had an update yeah. um, because I'm not showing this problem so it's not the fact the case of oh there's an update everyone must go around to all the AFDDs yeah. and yeah. store for the update because it's only you with this issue you know it's not I'm not getting yeah. the issue because I've not got the same machine uh, so I'm not you know it's not a requirement then for me to go do my updates because you an update does solve your problem yeah that's, that's interesting a... sorry go on sorry ricky i was just going to say i think that's a really good point that paul's mentioned there because we have had yeah. um people when we see them out and about a trade show saying you know it's going to be my responsibility to every time there's an yeah, update go back, back yeah. and update it no it's not the devices will work there perfectly as they are installed but if somebody does have a nuisance uh problem then we've yeah. got the facility to work with the customer and try and find a solution 
Well, we would just like to thank Nicholas and Ricky for joining us on this video. And it's great to see that we got a technical solution and we are able to update these devices. But you don't need to do it all the time. Thanks for watching. Thanks.